So you, we also have the possibility, and he just went a little bit further, he could be right over here, right behind the house. What's that noise? The object is right about here, right where that rock is. You can see it right there. Not too 100% sure what that is. Back in the day two, working the case of Ricky Walker, we were at breakfast this morning, reviewing our notes from yesterday, confirming the address of where the grandparents is at. Come to find out, I'm not gonna say that we messed up, but I'm gonna say in our confirmation process in the family, could not understand why I kept referencing a boat ramp yesterday. And what we found out was, is I was looking at an address that was south, where the grandparents' house was northeast, with this new information, we actually have a canal that is right behind the grandparents' house. It really changes where our search was going to take place today. We have the both teams splitting up right now. To bring you into the full story of Ricky Walker, we're gonna flash you back right now as to what happened yesterday. He was the only parent that I had. He was a single dad to me and my brother. Uh, me and my brother are only 10 months apart. He had an infectious laugh. He'd do anything for anybody. But yeah, he had left another friend's house and then um, they said when they woke up that he, was, he wasn't he was there. Up the back road, the way he was described, is feasible, very feasible. I, I could clearly see the bottom, I could see the growth. We're gonna head to the middle section of it. This is and would have been the bridge that Ricky would cross over. Zero car. So the family's not yet here, and I confirmed with them earlier, but this 980 10th Avenue Northeast right there is the grandparents' old house. So that's where Kelly ended up growing up with the grandparents. So you, we also have the possibility for uh, Ricky if he could have come in to the house as well and let's passed say, out let's say yeah let's say he parks at the back normally and he just went a little bit further he could be right over here right behind the house you know i'm not i'm not sure exactly on exact statistics but i do know that within a very close proximity of your destination things are a lot more liable to go wrong um, there, there's a lot of statistics in regards to accidents happening near, right near somebody's home or you know you're, you, you tend to be at your, your most fatigued point point. and if you are intoxicated or if you are at that point where you know you're barely making it you're working on your last you know your last little bit of energy he did pull in the driveway home and fall asleep just kept on going it, it's possible all of these locations we're searching today are absolutely 100 percent possible so what we have coming back to this one now you know first of all i had south instead of northeast i don't think it was ever in the notes and so that was the only one that was coming up for me on google maps and so that's where you know we had that confusion yesterday it was like why is kelly not remembering a boat ramp like yeah. she grew up at you know grandma and grandpa's house and so then when we you know confirmed her the information this morning it's like holy we have an entire canal right here where the home was being constructed 
the, you know, what if he ended up making his way over here and normally he parks in the back. We don't know what, you know, so what he normally actually, did. If you go down the canal, not very far, there's a bridge down here now. Yep, 8th Street. Not it, be there. it wasn't there when he went missing. Okay. It was a dead end road. You had to come down that road, which is 8th. Uh huh. And then you turn left on 10th, and then it would bring here. So I have them putting in at 16th. They're going to put in here. Then they're going to run up to the 18th. So that way, if the, your dad came off of any one of these roads, and then we're going to put in here check where the bridge didn't used to be but check eighth and then we're going to run it down to the corner and meet up with them down here so this area here which is the road runs right there on the other side of the house mm -hmm. dead ends into a canal here he used to take me and my cousin fishing there a lot okay and if he was intoxicated and turned on 10th maybe he made it that far so we need so we need house, so we need to check this little canal as well have drove off the end of that road okay all right, well, they're in the water already, so we're in the water, so we're gonna go cover all this. Fingers crossed for you, Kelly. So, you, you you're welcome. All right, well, we're six feet out here. But any one of these now that we're closest to the house, all of them are possible offshoots. And like Jeff was also saying, you know, his uncle Ricky used to take him down to, uh, you know, these little fishing holes at the end of each one of these. So every one of them makes sense for us to check. And we have not just this canal here that heads down to where we're going to meet up with the uh, guys at, but there's also one more offshoot that shoots up just in, uh, yeah, it's like two or three blocks down. And that's why, that's why he never took 18th Street because 18th Street did not cut across all the way. And that's why they were referencing Randall. Very consistent grading though on these canals. You know, when they cut them, they cut them all the same. See that gator down there? Is that a gator? Yeah, I think so. So now that you've had a chance to work this case, you're going into your second day. Do you have any better of an idea of what you might have think the night he disappeared? Um, I mean, I think it's just a classic case of I'm going out, I'm partying with my friends, I fell asleep on their couch, it's time for me to now go home, I woke up, and I'm just gonna go home. I know my route home, it's nothing out of the ordinary. I'm gonna go ahead and jump on, like I said, I think that the everything we did yesterday was very logical in hitting the first closest locations from the trailer park coming back up to the north. If I would have known about this specific address with the canal right here behind the house, would I have searched it first yesterday? Yes. No. No? I would not have. Because it wasn't close to the trailer park. It wasn't closest to the last known location. We have a, where was he last seen? Yeah. Where did he live? Where did he work? He worked and lived at the same location here as he was doing construction on the grandparents, on not his grandparents, but on his parents' house. Okay. It's Kelly's grandparents is who, is, is who it is. So we're still doing everything in order. Yesterday's search did not go, you know, it was not a wasted day. It's 100% made sense and we covered everything we needed to yesterday. And it led us to where we're at right now. Yeah. Process of elimination. I'm just glad that we did confirm the address for today so we weren't searching in the wrong area today. That would have been, you know, very disheartening, but and that's why we do confirm these addresses before we head over to them. And it also makes sense, like I said, it makes sense as to why nobody was referencing the same boat ramp that I was referencing. And this is a new bridge. This isn't a old bridge. Yeah, like like they said, this bridge was not here in uh, 93. But yeah. it was a dead end, so it makes sense to come search it. Because we've been at bridges before where they've done construction on bridges, like Samantha, Samantha Hopper. They did construction on the bridge, but her vehicle was yeah, just they, found 15 feet off the bridge. They never surveyed underwater nope. whatsoever. Yep. They worked around and over her vehicle for months. You know, when they, when they, when they did that bridge project, not only did they redo the bridge, they actually reformed the land on either side right over and all around Samantha the entire time of that project. They never once surveyed the bottom of that lake in their work zone, which, you know, I'm not an architect, you know, I'm, I, you know, I don't know what red tape they have, but I'm pretty sure they're supposed to do that. How are you not gonna verify what you're working in? You know, a, 
a standard sonar underwater assessment of what you're working on and reforming would have found her years ago. Absolutely. Yeah, so I saw a little something over here. I just want to double check over here real quick. Then we'll scan really good behind the uh, parents' house. And then we'll start making our way down to these other little dead end offshoots. All right, so we parked right up here. So what we're gonna do now is scan the area where we parked at and make sure that section's clear before we start the main search. Because if we just get in the water and start shooting, we just left a blind, you know, that car could be right here and we just missed it. So we gotta check every section of the, the canal that we're in today. Cause that would suck. Spend, spend days out here, miss one little spot and that's where the car is. So that's pretty darn, pretty darn clean. Rocks and branches and stuff. No cars jumping off the screen just yet. So we're back to the uh, edge of the property at the parents' house that was being built. So we're gonna search all of this really good along the border here. And nothing there. And so that's the, uh, that's considered 10th Street as well. I, I don't know, like 10th Street comes around. I don't know if there's like one's northeast, one's south, or how they actually label them or why. But these are really long blocks now, so we're gonna pull the sonar up get down to the next uh, road that comes in and then down to that canal that heads north and south. I saw something on the screen. We're only at five feet of water, but something jumped off the screens. It looks, it, it's, it, it's worth a shot. Let's see if we can find it again. Damn, there's no markings. It's right there. Oh, that's a boat. But you can see right here, it's obviously a boat. There's the bow. There's the back. Boat, five feet, still pretty good. That one's clear. Clear. All right, so here's that little uh, side canal. This is the second canal. This is the reason why 18th doesn't shoot through. It, because it dead ends into this road right here. Okay. And so what Jeff was saying is that this is where Uncle Ricky would bring him into this canal and they would come fishing down here. And it's still plenty deep, you know, it's five and a half, six feet in here. And so we'll run this all the way up to Randall. So I think with that, it's gonna be, I mean, you have to look all the way up there, but there's a bridge all the way down there that we're heading to. Five feet. guys hey have you guys noticed any uh, vehicles anywhere in these uh, canals any cars underwater have you seen any all right cool thanks for your time so for the people that are watching this and, and, and would think that and not understand Jared's questioning in that because it is a random question but if you don't understand what we're doing and fishermen Sometimes, and I'm gonna say a lot of times, know where there's vehicles underwater, but they become fishing spots, really good fishing spots for fishermen, and they don't say anything. And we urge fishermen to please come forward and to let us know where there's a vehicle underwater. If you have it on sonar imaging, I know it may be your best favorite fishing spot, your honey hole, but that could be connected to a cold case. It could be answers for a community and a family. Please reach out to us directly, let us know where those vehicles are because a lot of fishermen do know where there are vehicles underwater. All right, next road here. So this should probably be 12th, I think. Every one of these roads is a uh, even road, I believe. So now we're one road to the north of his parents' house. And we're five feet deep here. Five feet deep. Yeah. Old enough to hide a car from 23 years ago. I would suspect that the car is probably at least two feet sunken in. Yeah, I would say so too. So, small cutlass, two and a half feet of the vehicle is gonna be exposed. Yep. So, in five feet of water, I would estimate Three. two, two and a half feet of the vehicle 
To be underwater? To be underwater from the surface. Yeah. Which is more than enough for boats to clear, never hit. Nobody's gonna hit it, nobody's gonna notice it. And or, if it's been hit several times, you know, the roof's caved in and beat up. We've seen that a lot with cars. Yeah, yeah we've seen some roofs like, completely taken out from the boat motors over the years. What's that noise? Scared the crap out of me. I had a big bird, like it sounded like a uh, pterodactyl. Oh, there's parrots in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is this the road Jared said to stop at? Yeah. Randall. Randall Road or Randall Street or something like that. It's only four feet deep. There's a boat ramp though. Hey, there ain't nothing over here. Anything? No, tires. There was a boat up there. Did you see the boat? Oh man. Yeah, there's one boat, but we'll start making our way back the other way. deeper here six feet here and we have the road right here yeah it's on uh, both sides here on that Just side. dead ends right into the canal see if we're looking for Ricky. No gators over here on this one I've seen. I'm sure there are. No, they're just like a lot of other things, you know, they, they don't like being around people. Yeah. Another road. Kept up moving fast. I overshot it before I put sonar in the water. Sure we don't miss anything. Same thing though, it's less than five feet deep. Still on the edge of possible right here. The last two roads weren't, they were only four feet deep. Yeah, we're getting shallower at the very end down here. Now we're down to four feet. A little more block to Randall and... You think, what's that buoy out there for, you think? Yeah, it might be something down there slow past it. Probably somebody's trap. Catfish trap. Hey, 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 how you guys doing over there? Good, good. We just made it to Randall, turned around. Whole thing's about five feet. Found a boat, but no cars yet. Okay. Yeah, we're on the... Uh canal to the east uh, I'm sorry to the west of you is where we're at so yeah finish running that down in the corner and then once you hit the corner uh, take it uh, to the west from there and run it until either you run into us or you run into the next canal over to the west okay we'll do it all right cool yeah. bye yeah four feet three feet Less than four feet. Yeah, we're down to three and a half feet in the hole here. Tire, that's it. All right, so we just we just made it back to where we parked. We got that section cleared really good. So now we're just gonna keep going down this canal and search, search it all. And hopefully something pops up on the screen. We're at five and a half feet. I mean, that's like, I, man, I don't know. I mean, that might be like the limit. But I mean, it's it's getting slowly deeper. So I mean, six feet cutlass, maybe five feet sitting on in the dirt. It's possible if it's on its wheels or upside down. It could very well be hidden in here somewhere. The ground is sandy and muddy, so yeah, it's possible. So you got some kind of object? I think so. Something square kicking off a long shadow. Very weird spot if it is a car. Ain't no real roads right here. You can see it right there. Not too 100% sure what that is, but uh, I don't know. 
So we're six feet deep. The object is right about here, right where that rock is. Right there. Okay, I mean, we're talking four feet high, and I mean, not very wide or long. Almost like a log standing up. It looks like, it's, it looks like a tree that has been cut, or some kind of log or something. It's definitely not anything on wheels, no car. Going all the way back down, and then we'll, cut. Then we'll cut over and meet up with the uh, guys. That way all this canal is covered through here. where we have not scanned yet, right? Correct, so now we're heading to the east to meet up with them. They're on the north-south canal at this far east side. And so now we're gonna keep checking these roads coming into it to identify if by chance Ricky ended up off of any one of these by chance. back into the uh, deeper canal. A little bit deeper, not much. We have a road over here on either side crossing over and it'll be the same thing all the way down every block. Except for on this And side. this is the south side, so any one of these, he could have, you know, misgaged which one. In my opinion, I think he would have stayed on Everglade because that's the what he would normally take and then take that all the way up to Randall, as Jeff was saying earlier. See the oil? Yeah. You notice that too? Yeah. So what we're referencing right now is both Doug and I noticed a little bit of a uh, oil slick on the water, but as we have learned the longer we do this is that a lot of times you can just have organic matter that produces a sheen of some sort a natural oil slick uh oh my uh light is on my oil is getting low we motor might die on us before we make it back i don't know it's running fine now but when we get back we'll need to put some oil, oil in there Anyway, so the uh, organic matter from trees and leaves can produce an oil sheen like what we're seeing right here. Because we're not seeing any rainbow in there. In fact, if you look at it, it wasn't actually oily at all. It's just like a little film on top. Just from maybe stagnant water. Yeah. Looks like we're coming up on Jared's boat. Uh, I didn't think we'd run into him this, this close, but either way, doesn't look like they're shooting sonar right now. I wonder what they're doing, to be honest with you. Might uh, pick their brain, see what they think. Where, where are you guys at right now with, with your search so far at this point? We're not too far from the car. It's maybe a quarter mile that way. So you found a car? No, from where we put in it. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. We did find a boat. We had a boat? And what looks like, I mean, to me, it looks like a tree. Okay. It's it's square. It's about four feet above. You know, it's only two feet down. It's not shape of a car. It could be some kind of metal, maybe a barrel or something. But it's so, it's so shallow, though. I mean, it'd be hard for a car to hide five feet of water. So we were we were estimating that after like 28 years, at least two feet of the vehicle is going to be silted in. So you're talking about a small cutlass, maybe something that's only going to hold a height of about two and a half feet above the bottom you know because the old cutlass is short four and a half feet I'm, I'm not sure exactly how tall they are but they're not too tall it's definitely possible i mean but it you're, you're not going to mistake it in this canal yeah it's this canal there's there's not a lot of debris if, if you guys see a car even silted in two and a half three feet deep it's going to stick out like a sore thumb there's no going to be if you think it's a tree it's a tree pretty much 
because there's not a lot of objects in here. If it's a car, it's, it's gonna just, it, it, you're gonna know right away in this type of water. Well, you guys are closer to your vehicle than we are, so why don't you guys um, meet us over on 10th over here? So the best way to get here is once you hit your vehicle, head back up to Randall there. Okay. No, actually, no, head back down at Everglades. So head back down south on Everglades, make a ride on Golden, I think it was, and then shoot straight up 10th and we'll uh, wait for you over there. Okay. Mm. In the car. In the vehicle, yeah, yeah, pack up and. Okay. Okay. All right, sounds good. We'll see you over there. Thanks, guys. Mm. Yep.